Right. Well, I think as Christians, we all believe there are two kind of powers, but not equal powers, but there are two powers we, we commonly think of in Scripture uh, for good and for, for evil. And one of those is, of course, God, Yahweh, and the other is Satan. So we, we kind of accept this view. The question, of course, is, is does that, did that make sense to me as an atheist? I, I think what I, I would have agreed as an atheist, I would have given you a first step at least. I would have said, look, I don't think that evil is a thing. I think it's the absence of something. So um, it's kind of the shadow to the light has always been the comparison that is made. That without the light, you can't have the shadow. And the shadow is simply the absence of light in that area. So what we think of as evil is really the absence of something. But that requires the something to be there so that you can have the absence of it. So the something proves the absence, but it doesn't work the other way around, right, in life. So this is why we would say, you know, the best analogy we have for this is that, that, is that God is not creating this something we call evil. That evil is instead the absence of goodness. And a lot of that can be accounted for uh, even in our own free choices that we make. We often choose against what God would put up for us as the source of, as a model for good. We often choose to do something we shouldn't do. Think about this for a second. If there's a loving God, and if love is one of those, um, the nature of, of the world that we have to consider, like for example, we talked about um, eternity. If, if the world is really, uh, if we really live eternal lives, that changes everything. Well, if God is really a God of love, you have to think about what that would entail. In order for there to be love, you have to have the freedom to choose love. Otherwise, it's coercion. There's no love in a world where there's no choices. If you have no choice but to love, you're not really loving. You're just doing the robot thing that you have no choice to do. So in order, if we think love is a high priority, and I think the God of the scripture is the God of love. Look, read 1 John. I mean, you're going to be stuck with this version of God, which we love, right? We think it's so great that God is love. Okay. If that's the case, then what is the thing you have to put in place first in order to secure a universe in which love could exist? You have to secure first free agency. So it turns out if love is your goal, it's not the foundation. Free agency is the foundation upon which love stands. That's the problem though. That's a scary world. Because if you're gonna give people the freedom to love, you have to also give them the freedom to hate. The freedom to do the opposite of what you've committed. Now, it would be a terrible world if you gave people freedom but no guidelines. Here's a gun, I'm not even gonna show you. Here's a knife, I'm gonna throw it at you, I'm not even gonna tell you how to catch it. That would be a terrible world. That's not what God has done. He's actually given us the freedom to choose by giving us very strict guidelines so we won't abuse our freedom. Now what we typically do is we choose to ignore his guidelines and make choices that are not the choices he would make and then we kind of shake our fist at God. Well, a loving God gives you the freedom and guidelines and that's exactly what we see in the Christian world. A loving God who gives us freedom and guidelines and then we of course abuse those guidelines and that's not really, we can't shake our fist at God when that happens. We've got to you know, point to the person who's really at fault which is our own choices. So much evil we see in the world, not all, but much of the evil we see in the world, I think is because we have a foundation which God lays in place first, a free agency, and we simply abuse it.